and good morning. It is 20 minutes after 9 o'clock. And joining us in studio this morning from the Roswell Humane Society, Crystal Noble back with us. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry. How are you today? I am good. <laughs> I'm all, I was lost in thought there. She's getting her notes together here. So how, uh, how are you doing? Good. I like the cold weather, but I really don't want the wind tomorrow because we're barbecuing our turkey. Yeah, that wind's a, kind of a pain tomorrow. If we could deal with the other thing. So, well, maybe, maybe... Uh, you have a shielded area where it can block some of the wind to get, get the turkey fried. Are you frying it? Or? No, barbecuing. Barbecuing. Okay. Smoking or whatever. Yeah. Cool. Hopefully um, the wind won't whip down, but we'll see. Yeah. it's Well, now when you smoke it, do you, do you guys have a like a wood or, or pellet? Like, or is it electric uh, controlled? Mm-mm. See, Charcoal. that's where it's harder. Charcoal. Yeah, like if it's electric... The wind's not a big factor, yeah. but when you're trying to maintain the temp well, with, with charcoal or wood I will or rephrase. Something. We do have an electric charcoal smoker, uh-huh. but one of the elements is out. So it's useless. So <laughs> I can't use it right yeah. now, so we have to go back to old school. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully uh, the wind will... Uh, it'll, it'll, is it you or your husband? That My husband's of... actually going to cook it because okay. he likes to barbecue the turkey, and I like it in the oven. So. Ah, okay. I cooked it in the oven last year, so it's his year this so year. So you get to flip it. Gotcha. I'm only letting him feel he gets to flip it for a few years, and then after that, it'll just be whatever. Does he prep it, or do you prep it? No, I prep it. Okay. I didn't know if he... Cause, do you prep it different for the grill versus the oven? I would imagine. Not really. No? Okay. Mm-mm. I didn't know if he had to... Because mo- I'm thinking the grill might dry it out a little bit if you're not careful. So, depending on what size of grill you're doing, mm-hmm. if you have a super large grill, you have your coals spread out in a circle, and okay. then you have a drip pan gotcha. so that the moisture recirculates back through the turkey. Makes sense. If you okay. have a smaller one, you want to do hot side and cool side. Okay. So that way you can have your drip pan underneath it. Makes sense. So as long as you have a drip pan underneath it, the humidity so, in there will circulate. How big a bird do you got to cook? Um, you guys cooking? We didn't get a very big one. I okay, think it was a 15-pounder. So, okay, so not that's still a good size, but yeah, it's not like... A 25, 30 pound job. No, no. <laughs> if it was that big, it would be going in the oven. Yeah. Yeah. Because my grill's not that big. No, but say, you'd, and it'd probably be a tight fit in that oven, depending on if it's close to 30, you know. But, um, <laughs> well, good. So it sounds like you'll be, you, you guys are going to be. So is everybody coming to your place or? No. So we're going to do um, the morning at my uncle and cousin's house and then the evening at my uncle and aunt's house. So you're having two meals? Two meals. Oof. Two separate houses. Wow. Well, someone will be. Nobody's house is big enough for everybody to go to. Makes so. sense. So, so we'll do break it up in two sessions. Gotcha. But you got to help with food for, for both. Yeah. Well, I always do. You're the one. <laughs> I am the one. <laughs> so, um. Probably should talk dogs and cats. Well, and delicious, uh, <laughs> and delicious turkeys. <laughs> we will be closing today at noon. Okay, and then we're gonna stay closed all the way until Saturday. We'll okay. open back up 10 a.m. Saturday morning. Okay, and this is for the the shelter. Mm-hmm. And the thrift store is gonna be closed all this week. Okay, and when they reopen Saturday, it's gonna be for small business Saturday. Okay, and the entire thrift store is gonna be 50 percent off, including Christmas. Okay, anything with an X means it's Christmas, and so that means it's still 50 percent off. Okay. So we ask that you come and get your shopping on Saturday morning. And they're pulling out like as much of the Christmas stuff, like Christmas trees and ornaments and decorations. Like we have a storage unit that's right outside the building. So they're trying to pull out as much of it as they can. And as more sells, they're going to be pulling more out. Okay. So, but they have, I believe it's either a queen or a full size uh, or queen or king. Um, Serta Tempur-Pedic pillow top mattress. Okay. In those are high like dollar. Immense condition. Okay. So you probably get a cheap bargain on that one. So cause... I think they have it marked at three hundred right now, but with it being half off on Saturday, that would be one hundred and fifty bucks for. That's hugely discounted because I'm thinking that mattress news will fifteen hundred dollars. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if it's brand new, pretty much. Just, yeah, I don't think it's been used. It's been hardly used at all. So that's a quite a bargain for somebody it there. Is. So I, I imagine that won't last long. So you might want to no. be there early Saturday for that one. And they have, you know, everybody's starting to do their Christmas parties after Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Um, anybody who does the whole ugly sweater thing, they have an entire rack of ugly sweaters just right. for your need. So you guys, so 
don't go online and spend a bunch of money on those Mm-mm. expensive ones through some no, no. company in China or something. These are the ones that look like your grandma made them for you to wear when you were a little kid and just kept adding stuff to it. Yeah. These be those. These are the real McCoy. Yep. Not them fake ugly sweaters that come out now. Because that's like a trend. Like yeah. I, and, and I made a mistake of seeing something on, on Facebook once and clicking it, and now I get inundated with it. And uh, there's some, I'm assuming it's a company from China, they're making like pretty much any logo that is semi-popular in terms of brands, booze or anything, and they've made an ugly sweater out of it. So basically, if you want like a Milwaukee's best uncle uh, ugly sweater, they got one. So, so you got Carhartt, Ariat, yeah. Noble, <laughs> Milwaukee, DeWall. Yeah. But most of the things are like Pabst Blue Ribbon, uh, you know, a lot of liquor. Okay. Uh, there's a few in there for like snacks and stuff. But yeah, it's all kind of like Twinkies. Yeah, like young, <laughs> young, like like people like me trying to nostalgia bring back Pabst Blue Ribbon or something, or trying to justify it's good to drink that. You know, <laughs> even it's like I forgot it's only... what we saw. Oh, we saw slits when we were. Up in Rio Rancho, seeing my sister. Yeah. Um, I had went to look for Oktoberfest, and obviously they didn't have any more of it. And my husband goes, is that slits? And I was like, oh, God. Yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, Ugh. Yeah. That's a, that's a more obscure version of Keystone, basically. <laughs> well, <laughs> Although it was very popular back in the 70s and 80s. You I know. Here. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I don't know. I just remember Zima. Everybody was nuts over Zima. Yeah. Yeah, that was well, girls, not so much guys. When I was growing up, they it was not cool to drink Zima as a guy. <sighs> Those uh, things were disgusting. <laughs> well, it's like flat Sprite was always the the kind of taste I always got out of it. I thought it was flat champagne. Yeah, and uh, champagne's gross to begin with. So. I'm not a champagne fan either. But, although it's not bad with orange juice. <laughs> Mimosas. Yeah. So, so uh, thrift store will be closed yes. until sat uh, through t- until Saturday. Yeah. Will open for small business Saturday, ten a.m. I'm assuming. Ten a.m. Yeah. Ten a.m. Uh, again, be there at ten if you want to get in on some of the hot deals like the Christmas decor. Or that. They're putting out a lot of the brand new clothing. Um, so they've got like pants, shirts, winter stuff that still has tags on it, so you know it's not used. Okay, all of that stuff is going out. Good. Um, they've so got new go, shoes, still in boxes coming out. They're they're getting it stocked up today. They're not working tomorrow, but I think they'll be working Friday. Okay. Um, yeah, tomorrow's tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. I'm like, yeah. Ugh. the yeah. whole Wednesday thing throws me off. Yeah. 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 Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, so uh, yeah. yeah, I imagine they're at home with families tomorrow, and then they'll yeah. get up Friday and get ready for Saturday, and yeah. then uh, and, and like you said, the the shelter is closed. It closes at noon today, mm-hmm. so you got a couple more hours to. If you if you're looking for a puppy or a kid in the take home or want to check out the available, maybe you know meet your introduce yourself to one, and then after the holidays come and adopt. But yeah, because uh, there's no vets going to be open for Friday or Saturday. Yeah, exactly. But if you want to kind of check out the pet now, there might be a few pets you can that are already spayed or neutered that that, but they need to be chipped first, don't they? So yeah, they have to be micro. Be, as, yeah, unless mind. they are microchipped rabies and spayed or neutered, yeah. then they can leave. Never. Mind. I was going to say I don't think I have any of those. Um, I have two that are spayed, but they don't have microchip or rabies. Okay. Um, but we do still have um, Sunflower, who is coming on 16 months in the kennel. Over a year. That's too long. Way too yeah. long. I mean, anything over six months is way too long. It's, it is. Yeah. Um, and ironically, she has adapted super well. She's not going kennel sour. Um, but she needs to be in a home. She needs a home. She needs to find a loving family to, and 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 she's one of these dogs that's probably loved by everybody and kind of. She know. knows no strangers. Yeah. Like she sees people and she's like, oh, love. Yeah. Like she loves people, I, and kids. Like kids. Is are she her, older dog or a little bit? No, older? she's about two. Okay, so she's a full grown, but not, mm-hmm. but not. Like she sees kids and it's just like, oh, mine. Mm-hmm. And it's so because she's, she's kind of. A little bit more rowdy with adults, <clears throat> you know, like she'll not she's just full energy, not jump up roughly, but she'll jump up and lean on you. But like with kids, she sits and she scoots and then she leans. <laughs> so she knows the difference between kids and adults. She's probably been around kids. So she's and she understands what well, well, so, it sounds like this dog needs a home. It's, she does. 16 months is too long to be at the at the Humane Society for, for anything. So please 
please uh, see that and all the other dogs and cats. Go to uh, over the the holiday weekend here. Uh, go check out RoswellHumane.org, and you'll see every single animal that is calling the Humane Society home right now. Yes. Um, if it says not available next to their picture, that's because they're in quarantine or something like that. They they're not adopted already. And our website is under remodel construction. Okay. We're redesigning it a little bit. Okay. So um, sometimes it's loading, sometimes it's not. So be a little patient if, if you have a little so issue. If it has an it. error, um, just refresh it and it should load it. Okay. Um, but some of the pages are going to look different. Some of the fonts and stuff are going to look different because we're kind of redesigning it to see if we can condense some of the stuff into sure. a And I imagine if you go to the section. site frequently and you've got cookies installed, it may conflict with that a little bit or yeah. something it could be um, but the cat page and out. dog page they're they're not any different than they have been okay um you just click on the link and then it takes you to those pages okay but it's a great way that way you can see all the pets are available and then uh if you find a few that look just something you love you know call and ask about them obviously after the holidays here because no one's going to be there uh, till next week uh, after noon today um yeah um, and uh, that way, and then you call and inquire. And if it's if it's not available because it's in quarantine for whatever reason, please call anyway. Check, ask the status of it. Just kind of keep tabs on it. And and when it does become available, you can come on down. And and that helps the staff kind of understand that that these are people that are wanting these dogs for loving or cats for loving home. It does. Um. It it also helps us know that you're committed to something. And the more we see commitment, the where it helps us know that we are finding a good home for yeah, them. Yeah, that's the whole point of this. So so please. And then, of course, another way, if you're at the website there, become a member. Um, your dog, your kids, your cats. Your... That page might be down. Okay. So um, uh, Because we're having later, to but... update PayPal stuff on it. Okay. Um, so that page might not be working right now. Um, but we did have our business review come out in the newspaper last week that had our membership form. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if you want a membership form, you can call down there. I'll mail you one if you don't want to run down and pick one up. Okay. Um, but I do believe that the membership page is currently down. Okay. So uh, so maybe a little patience on that or go through the paper. But either way, that's a great way to support the Humane Society. And uh, so whether you do it over the weekend here or next week or whenever, but that's a great way. You get newsletter. You get to be a part of the decision-making process of the Humane Society. But, but uh, that money goes to help pay vet bills, to pay for... Uh, utilities and all the things that you know the money that's needed to run a, a shelter everyday life things is yeah. what it helps with yeah and so and then of course donations um like i said till about noon today but after after day you know wait till next week but if if you got kitty litter food dog cat food uh toys are good uh please call ahead on some of that mm. if you've got questions like rawhide stuff we don't want any of that but we if it's... try to stick to just like the hard rubber kong type toys gotcha. so that way we could put like treats inside gotcha so that way it's a stimulator so that way when they're playing with it and they get a toy or a treat thrown out you know it encourages them to play with that toy more gotcha um like the squeaky soft toys we typically frame from that just because if they rip out that sticky toy and we're not there we don't want them to eat it and choke swallow it, it yeah choke on it um, big dogs tear them up in two minutes. Little dogs are the ones that will end up. You know what? We've had some little dogs that are pretty good destructors. Well, it takes a little longer, but they're the ones that are going to choke because they got the little throat and they, yeah. they chew that squeaker part. Um, and, yeah. Tennis balls are always a good um, little balls to the big tennis balls yeah. because, you know, little dogs like balls too. And Absolutely. unfortunately, their mouth doesn't fit over big old yeah, tennis balls. Yeah, you get them little tiny ones. That the... They're adorable. Yeah. <clears throat> and I will tell you, that is the hardest thing to make squeak. But you give it to a dog and they're like, wait. And I'm like, I was just squeezing uh, that. Their jaw strength is 10 times stronger than our, our hand strength probably. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, but tennis balls are always a good, um, and like I said, anything hard, rubbery, kind of like the Kong toys. It doesn't have to be Kong brand. Um, just something, you know, hard like that. So okay. that way, like, we could put treats in them as a stimulator to help sure. keep their minds As far as treats go, like crazy. your milk bones and bacon strips and all that. Milk that's... bones, pepperonis, um, those are kind of the ones that we stick more so okay. to. Um, the bacon strips are, yes, um, they just don't fit in a lot of the toys for the treats that they go with bacon in. bacon strips, they look in smell like something a human wants I'm to I'm going to tell them. you right now, every time I open that bag of pepperonis, my stomach growls. And I'm like, stop. Yeah. It's dog treats. Yeah. It don't they taste how it smells. They smell so yeah. delicious. Well, yeah. 
I have a fun story pertaining to dog treats. Yeah. So pepperonis used to come in a round canister with the lid. Okay. Kind of like um, Slim Jims. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So remember when the Slim Jims or Pepperidge Farms mm-hmm, yeah. came in the round tin can with the lid? Well, an employee's father, um, his mom had bought a thing of pepperonis and a thing of Slim Jims. <laughs> he did it on purpose. <laughs> and so his dad went to go grab some beef jerky. Well, he just saw the can with the lid, not realizing that the dog treats looked the same, uh-huh. and grabbed the dog treats and was eating them. How many did he eat before he realized what he had? He didn't realize what he had. His <laughs> wife came in and she said, what are you eating? And he goes, "The oh, <laughs> Apparently, I'm eating the dog treats. They taste pretty good. And when he told me the story, I started laughing. I was like, no, you didn't. And he goes, yeah. He goes, so I told her, instead of spending that expensive money on the jerky, just buy me the dog treats. And I was like, no. I'm like, I know they smell good, but they can't really taste they that good. Yeah. And he goes, taste them. And I was like, nope. I'm not that person that tastes the food that my dog eats. Well, I've tried bacon strip. I'll smell them. Yeah. But I'm not tasting them. I have tried a bacon strip, and it does not taste like jerky. It, no, it's it, gross. One of my employees, Felicia, yeah. love her to death. She will not feed her dog or cat something that does not taste good. So she literally tastes their food. And if it doesn't taste edible to her, she won't feed it to them. Okay. And But she also buys like all natural, you know, not like processed stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. So fresh, fresh ingredients, fresh. She fresh. does. Yeah. But what makes me laugh is when we get like dog treats in that say like, cinnamon butter biscuit or whatever and it says made in the usa all natural ingredients she will try that treat before we give it to the dogs good for her and i'm like you know i, I mean I, you're committed more than i am i told God her i was like it. i'll sniff it and if it smells funky yeah. i'm probably not gonna let him have it but yeah not everything dog smells appealing exactly. even though it's made from our ingredients yeah it well, doesn't and, smell and their appealing. taste buds are different. They can't handle the rich foods and, and spices that we. They eat. lick their butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so their they, taste buds are way different than ours. Yeah, you're really just giving them expensive food that that they really don't benefit any more than <laughs> they would if something without the seasoning in it. So, it, but I get it. People want the treat I just their laugh pets like humans. She's and they the one do that goes that, to the treat bar at Petco, and then her and her dogs sample sample. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, Felicia. <laughs> Does she like the movie Friday? Or she so hate that movie? Because, I mean, Felicia. Yeah, well, we always tell her, Felicia. Felicia. <laughs> and I, you I know feel funny, so bad for people named Felicia in that movie. What's even funnier is if, like, the regulars, you know, when uh-huh. we leave, if we don't, like, say, bye, Felicia, she's like, are you mad at me? And I'm like, no, I said bye, have a good night. And she goes, but you, you didn't say bye, Felicia. I'm like, bye, Felicia. She's like, okay. Say it just like Ice Cube. Bye, Felicia. And I laugh because a lot of the a lot of the customers that come in, uh-huh. you know, and I love our community because the majority of our community is very wholehearted and down to earth mm-hmm. and has seen the movie Friday. <laughs> right. So an older gentleman had came in and him and her were talking. And he was getting ready to leave, and he's all, bye, Felicia. And she goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> and she looked at him, and she looked at me, and I go, everybody knows Friday. And she goes, what is Friday? And I was like, you don't know where bye, Felicia came from? And she's like, no. And I was like, oh, wow. I was well, like, guess we got to go watch a movie. I was like, you're coming over watching a movie tonight. <laughs> But, well, then you watch the first one, they're like, well, I got to watch the second one now. And uh, I think there are like four or five of them. Yeah, well, you only need the first two. Yeah. I think there's three. There's the Friday. One, yeah. Friday after next. And then there's like the next Friday. The next something. Friday. Yeah. And then Friday, Christmas, bone. Oh, that's right. The bone one. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you, the first two I loved, anything past the second one, they're not good. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. just, you know, um, all about Friday. Um, Debo was here at Walmart. He just passed away. I know. Several years ago, yeah. Yeah, he was at Walmart when I was a cart pusher. Huh? I was like, that's Debo. <laughs> <laughs> who? What do you mean who? Everybody know who's Debo is. He'll steal your bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I got a shopping cart. <laughs> but everybody that the majority of the people that come into the kennels are there because you know they're looking to find an animal that's going to fill a void. Yeah. And then we have the few people that are. Not so filling a void, just yeah. want a lawn ornament. And we can pick those out really quickly. Yeah, and it's unfortunate, but 
this is what the humane because the humane societies are going to be in that goal of, of loving home. So when they ask you questions about your fenced in yard and all that, it's not not because they don't want to adopt a, a pet to you. It's because they want to make sure when they adopt any one of these pets, they don't come back. They're going to their forever home right. and uh, live out the rest of their lives in a wonderful place. And the cats, you know, we do require the cats to be strictly indoors for their safety. Mm-hmm. You know, I know cats were born in the wild as well as dogs, but we don't live in a society that's safe for them to live outside. Mm-hmm. There's bigger predators. There's more diseases, and there's the risk of them getting hit by a car, attacked by a bigger animal, or getting sick and bringing it home, and mm-hmm. then everybody else that's in the house, you know, gets Outdoor sick. cat's lifespan is, is a quarter, way shorter than a your indoor cat's. It absolutely is. So if you if you believe in the indoor-outdoor cats, unfortunately, we will not adopt a cat to you. Yeah. We will direct you to animal control. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do always encourage, you know, if you have like an enclosed patio and yeah. you let them out there on that, that's different. Right. But if you want them to just go outside and troll the neighborhood and come home in the nighttime, that's a no. Yeah. Now, I mean, it, and I understand, you know, some people you live out in the country and you want to keep mice and stuff out the barn. So you have a barn cat. You know, animal control has a fine selection of cats. It'll probably serve that purpose. Right. And I will tell you right now, if you have a barn cat, there are things you need to do. Mm-hmm. One. Do not tame it. Yeah, because you're 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 ill equipping it to to survive out on its own in the barn. Uh, right. If yeah. you tame that cat, you're yeah. you're gonna have a barn cat that's a house cat that lives in the barn. Yeah. Don't don't tame it. You know, make it a um used to you. You mm-hmm. know, feed like if you're gonna feed it, that's fine. But a mouser, you know, has to hunt. They have to. Be they got to the put bigger, into practice their their inherent. They have to be the bigger prey animal set, yeah. But also, coyotes, cats will draw coyotes in. So you don't want a dozen of them. Mm-hmm. You want one or two, and you want them fixed, and you want them vaccinated. Um, when you have a feral cat, make sure you have a cat trap so you can trap them, take them to the vet, so that way if they do get hurt, you're able to still care for them the way they needed. Um, if you have an area, you might keep them enclosed in that area for just a little while until they're used to the area Gotcha. because they're going to go flight or fight mode. Well, they don't of, know the area. Well, it's they, probably learning that this is their territory. We're right. establishing your, your right. patrol area, your territory, your, your place to protect kind of thing. And so that's, right. that's kind of helping with that process, I'm guessing. That helps them, you know, realize that, okay, this is my surroundings. I don't need to run. You know, these are the sounds I'm going to be hearing. His um, home base. <laughs> yeah, and it basically just helps them realize that this is where they need to stay. Sure. And if you have, like, an enclosed barn, close it at night. Make sure the cats are inside and close it at night just so that way, one, it keeps them warm. Sure. Two, it keeps them protected. Well, the predators from... that are going after them, that's when they hunt. Right, because you know, they owls. hunt at night. Do the yes. thing size that cat, an owl will take it? Uh, a where whole we slew of used predators. to live, there was a, a gray horned owl couple because, you know, they're... Uh, made it for life mm-hmm. i could see them things from about 20 acres away standing in the middle of the field looking like jeepers creepers yeah they get big they do and cats they'll those haul are, off a cat they'll haul off a <laughs> dog they will haul off a medium-sized dog because yeah. they are big enough to do it uh-huh. hawks will haul off cats yeah so if you live out in the county you have feral cats you need to be able to maintain them and keep them in an area where it's going to be safe for them sure because that animal's life still matters just as much as another animal. But mm-hmm. there's wild animals out there for these animals to hunt. That's sure. how you keep down the mice population well, is birds in Mother the sky. Nature has its own food chain that we're just they a, do. a part of. We don't have control of. No, but <laughs> cats should not be on their menu. Yeah, exactly. So, but yes, you're right. That's that's. But I get that sometimes, you know, that's working cats. But animal control is where you want to go. Every cat that yeah that's coming out of... The Humane Society, these are indoor cats. These are your friendly cats that are going to play with a fake mouse yeah. and not a real mouse. The idea is to get them fatter as years go by. <laughs> <laughs> but not too fat. You don't want to kill them with kindness. You want to be right. kind to them and don't have 
don't have the 55 pound cat that only ate hot dogs its entire life. I saw one of those cats on Twitter the other day. I, I think it was literally a 50 pound cat. I'm like, wow. We it was, had it was one pretty, but come into so the kennel that yeah. the owner had only ever fed it hot dogs. Wow. And the cat was like 48 pounds. Wow. And Santa Fe Humane, you know, they had the capabilities of putting him on a diet. Yeah. Well, they also flew him to New York for the New York show, and he died in flight because his body couldn't handle oh, the flight. Man. Because it was, it was but so much he was holding its own weight almost up. 50 pounds. Wow. Like, he was the size of a lab, Ugh. and he was just a tomcat. Yeah. The cat, you he didn't have legs. He had things that <laughs> stuck nubs. out like this, <laughs> and when he walked, like it looked like a worm because Ugh. his whole body hit the floor. That is not healthy no, for your cat no or dog to look like that yeah no don't feed them human food if you're gonna feed them human food do tuna and oil yeah do shredded chicken that's boiled with no seasonings mm -hmm. but don't feed them processed food because their body does not process it yeah yeah tuna is your safest bet on when it comes to protein and, stuff. and salmon yeah uh, just make sure you get deboned yeah um but salmon is really good for cats too yeah, and the oils and stuff's good for their coats and skins mm -hmm. and all that. Just and same it with helps dogs with dander. Too. Yeah, you know, dogs you put in eggs and things and stuff, and they, that's good for their coat, especially if they're a short-haired dog. Like and you a know, lab another thing, a lot of people don't realize, like we take fish oil, we mm -hmm. take omega threes and omega sixes. A lot of that is in their food too, but if you get, they have an actual um, supplement, and I can't remember the name of it, but I know they sell it at Petco, and it's in a little pump thing. You. Pump it onto their dry food, and then you mix it. Okay. And you do that once a day. It's just like our water now, where you squirt in a thing of uh, flavor, mm -hmm. drink, or whatever, punch, and then now you got a, a drink that's right. not water. Yeah. So, um, but this helps with, like, their coat. It helps with their skin. It helps with dander. It helps with a ton of stuff. It also helps internally. Their joints, their ligaments, you know, it's kind of like greasing the inside of their body. Okay. Um, it does the same for them as it does for us. And the majority of the time, it makes them like their food a lot better because sure. it smells all sticky. And yeah. Sticky. And then they process it a little better. They, they got a little more lubrication to get everything out the way it's supposed to. Right. <laughs> and that also helps lack of hairballs. Um, if you got a cat that's, you know, continuous with hairballs. Yeah, especially long hairs. They, they generally have uh, hairballs. You know, issues. I've had several long haired cats. And the worst cat that I ever had hairballs with was a short hair. Really? Now, I, I got two long hairs. Uh, but I have a black and white with long hair, and I got a, a, tortoise a, a tortoise shell with long hair. And only the tortoise shell, I got hairball issues. I don't think I've ever seen the black and white cough up a hairball. Hannah is the one I have to give the laxatone to and all that to keep it. Because if I don't, then she starts throwing up all the place. So, so, but if I do, she's good to go. But <laughs> if I don't, I guarantee she wolfs down food and pukes it up and then has hairball issues. And it's, you know, they've made it to where the cats actually like the taste of it. So mm -hmm. it's not like giving them medicine. Oh, it's a treat. The one it, that doesn't yeah. need it is a crackhead that I got to fight away to get to. So I feed the other one. I literally have to take one to the other room just so I can, because the other one's got to sniff and do a whole rigmarole before I lick it off my hand. The other one's <laughs> just a savage. So I've got to separate them and let the one do the licking and sniffing and all that till it finally takes a bite. And then keep the savage at bay till I can get, you know, the other one fed. <laughs> <laughs> so what you can do is the savage yeah. rub some on the front of each one of her paws really quickly in her nose. Uh -huh. And while she's busy trying to figure that out, you, you can take the other, the other one, one, one in the cat. Yeah. <laughs> that's good, well, and that's what I do with the one that it gets too picky and starts sniffing and walks away and sniffing and do Fine, I'm like, I'm done with this. And I just, <laughs> just shoot her right on her nose. And then, because and, she has to lick it off. And then she licks it off. I've only done it a couple person. times. Usually she's good. But she doesn't goof around as much now. Like I've noticed that since I've done the thing, she's been more, okay, sniff, sniff. All right, fine, I'll lick it. Yeah. And they're like, okay, I know. Like, you know, I'm waiting too long. It's You know where it's going. <laughs> but yeah, the other one, you know, the crackhead, you know, just rubs them on her paws and her nose so that way it keeps her occupied. Yeah. So that and she's way. got a good sniffer too, because I could be in another room and open it, and she wouldn't hear it. Over. It's not that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, it's just a. But she catches a whiff because it's got that like the one I have now. It's kind of got a mapley smell to it. So uh -huh. yeah, it's. I d I love how they make animal food smell appealing to humans. Yeah. You know, and it's not going to taste good. Yeah. Like there's a medicine that we give them, like if they're um, lacking in vitamins and mm -hmm. stuff, it's called petinic. Okay. And it smells like beef broth. 
Huh. It just makes me want beef stew. Like, it smells like beef broth. Not on purpose, <laughs> but I have tasted it. Yeah. Because sometimes they don't like it, sometimes they do. Well, when they fling and it goes in your mouth. You got a piece. It did not <laughs> taste like beef well, broth. Well, yours got a little mix of little dog saliva, too. So no, you, no, it was a cat. No, cat saliva. It was a cat. <laughs> so, but it was definitely not what it smelled like so yeah, well, smelling it is not always how it tastes. Uh, i've learned that the hard way several times i mean that the bacon strips that's that's one that caught me because they smell delicious and you're like surely this tastes just like a jack Link's jobber and it does mm, not no <laughs> it does no. not <laughs> nope i'm not the adventurous one to taste animal foods um i'll sniff it i'm not a you know i'll yeah. smell it but i'm not going to taste it right not i mean i've tried it but yeah i'm not all out in the regular like oh, let me see if i can try eat this stuff <laughs> Um, again, if anybody has any questions about everything, like I said, the, the, the thrift store is closed through Saturday until yes. Saturday for the small business Saturday, big fun event, huge savings, 10 a.m. sharp. Everything starts there. So that's where you want to be on Saturday. Uh, the, the actual shelter itself is open till noon today and then we'll be closed until next week. Yeah. We'll uh, be open Saturday. Oh, oh, the shelter yeah. will be open. Yeah. Saturday. We're just going to be closed at noon today. Okay. And then Thursday and Friday. We'll be there cleaning and taking care of the animals. Gotcha. We're just not going to be but as open far as to the public, public coming in, adopt and shop. No, yeah, uh, not till Saturday. So, do not they open Saturday. at ten also? Yes. Uh, the shelter. So, yes. so do our you shop hours then... are ten to twelve, and then one to four thirty. Okay. And then the thrift stores are ten to four thirty, and we are Tuesday through Saturday minus this week because of the holiday. Yep. And the thrift store is Wednesday through Saturday. Very good. Minus the holiday. And then RoswellHumane.org, but it is under construction, so if you're having a little issue navigating through there, please We be have patient. a big um, flashing thing at the top that says, please excuse our construction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and don't forget uh, on Facebook as well, follow and like yes, the Humane yes, Society yes, there, because yes. that's have, a constantly updated. With and we new have a new logo. Things. So if you are looking for the old logo, uh -huh. um, that's not there no more. Our, we were... You went with the alien theme. We do, yes. Logo. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We were... Um, Lucky enough to win a grant for a professional company to redesign us a logo. Cool. And so <clears throat> we tried to figure out something that was unique that nobody else had and that would help distinguish Roswell, New Mexico from Roswell, Georgia, mm -hmm. because their Humane Society is very similar to ours. Okay. So we now have, it's a cat and a dog sitting inside a spaceship. And it's really cute. It's really simple. And it says Roswell Humane Society around it, um, blue and green. So if you are looking for the old logo, that that's not there. Look for the cat and dog in spaceship. Yeah, good deal. Are those going to be available in t-shirts or anything? Soon? We're actually we're working with Vistaprint to get some shirts made. So okay. anybody, once we get that situated, yeah, um, we will have them available for sale. We'll have them listed good. on the website, Excellent. and then also I think new members are going to get a free t-shirt. Good. We'll buy a bunch of shirts because again, that all goes back to the animals. It when does you do that. So. It really does. And Vistaprint is uh, working really nicely to try to help us to get um us a grant to actually cover the cost so we don't have to pay for it up so front. all the money you collect is pure helping the animals yes love it love it love it again roswellhumane.org uh look for the humane society and check out the new logo on facebook yes and then uh come on by this saturday beginning at 10 a.m for the uh at the thrift store, the uh, the back or back to school, <laughs> small business Saturday, <laughs> small sale. business Saturday, and, uh, and then of course the uh, come and and uh, come and shop and adopt. If you love purses, I love purses. Um, they've got a ton of nice, cute purses, nice. and so I'm not the whole little purse kind of girl. I like the you like big the big I do. Uh, I do. My husband says I need it on wheels with because a it's heavier than his <laughs> um, military bag, but the duffel bag, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I he know. called it another bag, but um, <laughs> I, I did the family friendly version. <laughs> yeah, we um, good deal. Um, we better go here. I just saw the time here. Oh so. yeah, everything good? Yeah, everything's good. <laughs> I was just making sure I didn't have any more notes. I was oh, like, okay. did we cover everything? Well, I heard your thing go off like someone was chiming in. I was like, all right, oh. somebody got something going. No, on. Uh, I get the. I always hear the boom. I'm like, all right, who's trying to yell at me? So, uh, but yes. Come out and be a part. Happy Thanksgiving to yes, you. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. And don't work too hard. I know you got seven dinners to plan, but <laughs> but don't try not to work too hard. Put Only, your husband to work on that turkey. He'll work on the turkey. I'll work on the sides and then all the desserts. So we have key lime pie, cherry pie, peach cobbler. That's not quite a pie. variety. If you don't, there's got to be one pie in that whole group that someone would like. You know, if you don't, you're a bah humbug. 
I'm the cherry pie girl. I'll eat cherry. I'll eat keem lime. I won't mess with peach, but I'll eat with the others. The cobbler is mainly for my husband because ah. he loves cobbler. Good deal. Peach. So. My, my wife makes one about him. I don't like peaches. Don't mess with those. All right. It is uh, 9.54. <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a quick break before we wrap up. Don't go away. Now you're picking.